It's on in my head, though. Oh, it's on so you can hear it. It's just ringing in my head. We want to take care of a few items of church business this morning. You'll notice in your flyer, there's a flyer for the women's ministry, and I want you to make note that the time is incorrectly listed. So the pro the program starts at 4.30, not 5.30. Please make a note that for the women's ministry program, that is at 4.30, not 5.30. Um, there's a considerable amount of things there in your bulletin, and we encourage you to read them. We have so many activities going on there, and our church secretary takes so, such a good job of gathering those together, so we ask that rev you review those. This morning, we want to um, address some church members um, joining our family and also officers. So I'd like you to take note first for church business, our first reading there for the children's ministry leader. We're nominating Judith Mason as church ministry leader. Take note of that. For v VBS leader, Katie Ceballos and school board secretary, Lacey Varner. And then we will vote on those next week. Also for membership transfer, second reading. Um, I'm, it is my understanding that we may have voted, actually Mac Michael Rose to Augusta First, from Augusta First to Atlanta North some four years ago, but we wanna make sure officially we have a vote on that. So for those of you who know Michael Rose, please don't come to me. We, Want to just make sure that's official. So on favor of what has already taken place, we've sent a missionary to Atlanta, to Atlanta North Church, and he and I are friends, and he's working the AV and actually I think a deacon there at the church for now several years, but we want to make it official. All in favor, let it be known by aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's a little too late. <clears throat> also, um, I'm not sure if we actually did the second re reading, but we don't make that official as well. For Michael, I mean, not Michael, for Matthew Dellen. Matthew is a young man that's been serving in our church for a while, and hopefully um, he's going to stay for a while. All of you who don't know them know him. We want to introduce him. I don't see him here today, but we'll, we'll, we'll corner him later. Um, we'll entertain a motion for Mike, Matthew. I don't know why I'm kind of keep calling him Michael for Matthew to join this family officially. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. So again, we encourage you to be aware of things you know, church family, we're having the 10 days of prayer. It's lo located in your bulletin. We encourage you tonight to join us and every night for the rest of the week as we enjoy the blessings of praying together and studying together. Thank you. Good morning, church family. Morning. Happy Sabbath. I don't know what kind of week you guys had. Could have been a wonderful week that was just full of blessings. Could have been maybe a not so great week where you were a little sad, a little tired, a little stressed. But no matter what kind of week you had, you have come to the house of the Lord to praise him with us today. So I want you guys to sing your hearts out like that is what you're doing. Like this is what we're going to do in heaven. We're going to worship the Lord. So I want you guys to join us as we sing our first song. Uh, which is Come Thou Found. Found. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Oh, 
goodness like a fetter bind me closer still to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to Our next song is You Are My All in All because Jesus is truly that, our all in all. And this is not in the hymn note, but the words are on the screen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. to give up I'd be a fool you are my all in all Jesus Lamb of God worthy is your name Jesus Lamb Rising again, I praise your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you lift me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Welcome. <laughs> Happy Sabbath day, everyone. It is good to have good people to stand out, stand up for you and stand in your place. And I praise God for this beautiful Sabbath. I know it's raining outside, but the sunshine is in our hearts, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. We have any visitors here today? I know I see some faces I'm not familiar with. Yes. <laughs> Anyone? Huh? Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for visiting today. And I know you're going to have, the Lord has got something in plan for all of us. And I want to welcome all of those who are look, looking and watching on YouTube. And my brothers and sisters of Augusta First, thank you for coming today. 
Um, uh, as we do every Sabbath, I want you to take a time and, and a moment to get up and welcome one another. Find someone you're not familiar with and tell them happy Sabbath. Oh, it's so lovely to meet one another this beautiful Sabbath. Now we're going to, I ask that you return to your seats. I know you're having a great time. <laughs> but we're going to continue into the service. I, I, I want you to, to pay attention to this very important message, uh, particularly those who are members of this church. Um, the tax information, it, you heard that tax, tax, T-A-X. Information <laughs> is out front for you. Uh, it's tax time for your benefit. So we're going to continue with the service as the praise team comes up and sing Holy, Holy, Holy and give us our opening song. Is it Power in the Blood? Yes. Okay. That was my part, Randy. <laughs> Please stand with us for our song of consecration, Holy, Holy, Holy. Father, we thank you so much for this day that we can all come together as one family, because this is what it's going to look like in heaven. We're all together with you. We thank you for the week we've had, whether good or bad. We know that you've been with us through it all, and we pray that with communion today that we reconcile things that are on our hearts and be open to what you have for us in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Our opening song is Power in the Blood. I want to feel some energy in this room. Would you be free from your birth? Blood of the Lamb, 
There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's time. Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power. Anthony, a dedicated father who, like thousands of Christian parents, experienced the same heartache. His three adult children had drifted away from the church. Already living with their own families, they showed no desire to attend the services. To the discomfort of their children, Anthony constantly invited them to church and persistently talked about the perils of being far from God. They kindly asked their father to stop inviting them to church. Anthony intensified the prayers for his children. While praying for them one morning, a particular scripture crossed his mind. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The more he prayed, the more that verse resonated with him. Anthony made a bold decision. During a family meeting, he informed his children that he would grant their request and no longer insist that they return to the church. But there was a condition. They would return their tithes and offerings to God. Surprisingly, the children accepted the agreement, thinking they would no longer be bothered with invitations to the church. But in time, something extraordinary happened. Anthony had the privilege of witnessing his three children return to the church. In the context of tithes and offerings, Ellen G. White says, there has been a great neglect on the part of parents in not seeking to interest their children in the workings of the cause of God. And she continues by saying that, in many families, children seem to be left out of the question as if they were irresponsible beings. As we look to protect the hearts of our children, let us motivate them to put God and His cause first. Let us invite them fervently to return their tithes and promise offerings to the Lord. If their treasures are in heaven, we may be sure that there their hearts will also be. May we put our desires last and God first. Isn't that a blessing? Each week we see these videos. We witness how God's work is being done when we return our tithes and offerings. See, tithes and offerings is not all about money. It's about the heart. About the heart. How much you really love God and his ministry. Let us continue to pray uh, for these funds that we're returning to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the work that you're doing around the world. We thank you for your ministries. We thank you, dear Father, for impressing upon our hearts to return our tithes and offerings. Now, Lord, we ask that you touch these blessings, multiply them, that your work may be done and your work may be finished 
And we'll see you soon in the clouds of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the family prayer this week, uh, we will be praying for Suzanne St. Pierre. And uh, I stopped by yesterday by the nursing home where, where she is to try to visit with her. But as I stopped by, there was an ambulance was taking her to the hospital uh, to help to manage with the pain. And so we really need to uplift her in our prayers as the family. Right now she's at, uh, um, supposed to be at with hospice care, and we want to pray for her, for the family. We're thankful that Jerry and Chuck are helping her quite a bit through this time, and we can uplift them in prayer as well. So let us pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for opportunity to come together as a church, and uh, you have made a promise when we gather together and we seek your will that you will answer that prayer. And we want your will to be done for Suzanne. We want um, uh, for healing and restoration. We know that everything is possible for you. And we trust everything into your hands, including her life. And we ask also right now that you would help with the, with the pain management, uh, that she will not be... Uh, suffering as much as she is right now, uh, that um, uh, she will be able to get some relief from that, that she'll be able to feel your presence, that she'll know that you are close to her through all this time. We pray for Jerry and Chuck as well, for, for the family, that you would um, uh, strengthen them and support them through this time also. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, boys and girls. It is time for Lamb's Offering and Children's Story. So I ask that you would join us up front and start collecting the offerings. Church family, the, the offerings that are being collected will be a great blessing for our students in need. So we appreciate your support for our school.
All right. Good morning, guys. Good morning. morning. How are you all doing? Good? All right. So I'm going to give you one more minute. We can finish. All right. Thank you. Let me make a circle here. Right. So many years ago, there were two very good friends. Can you think of a very good friend that you have? That's right. We all have some good friends. Well, there were two very good friends who lived in a small village. Their names were Luke and John. What were their names? Luke and John. Luke and John. And they used to play their fairy games. What are some of your fairy games? Oh. Tag, hide and seek. What else? Soccer. Soccer, all right. Football. Football, baseball. What else? Football. Football. So, all right. So they used to play together. They used to have so much fun. But their parents always, always told them, do not go beyond the fence that keeps our village secure at night. But one day... They were tired and bored of playing soccer, tag, hide and seek, all of those games that you enjoy playing with your friends. They were tired, they were bored, and guess what they did? They went beyond the fence. And as we all know, there are consequences for our wrongdoings. So they began running in the woods and they continued running and wandering. They, they wanted to see what was beyond the fence until Luke fell in an empty well. And he started screaming. He started screaming. He thought that he was going to stay there, that he was not going to be rescued. He was crying. He was desperate. He didn't know what to do. He tried to get out. He tried to climb out, but he couldn't. And then his friend John remembered what his mom had always told him. There is power in prayer, and God watches over us. So guess what he did? He prayed that God would give him the strength. So he ran and he grabbed a bucket that had a rope attached to it. He threw it to look who was inside the empty well, sent it to him, and although he didn't have physical strength, God helped him to take his friend out of the empty well. When Luke came out, he didn't have a single scratch on him. Because God had kept him safe. They ran back to the village and they told everyone the story. And no one believed them until mom said, as I always tell all of you, there is power in prayer and God watches over us. The Bible tells us that God is our refuge and strength in times of need. So today, let us remember that we must be obedient to our parents, do as they say, and keep in mind that God watches over us and there is always power in prayer. Today, I need one of you to pray for two things. To pray for obedience and to pray for the rest of our friends that are not here today because they are in the Bible experience. All right? So who's going to pray for those two things? Larry? All right. By help. Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. We thank you for our friends. Today we ask. And today we ask. So you help us. So you help us. To be being. To do what you tell us. And we thank you. We also ask. For a friend who is not here. Gives them wisdom, reminds them what I just learned. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. It's nice to see you today. Uh, we have a special guest with us. This is Kimberly. She is representing, and she's the director, let's say that, right? Director, founder. the founder of the God Loves Me Too. And um, 
she's gonna, we, the school is going to um, cr uh, have a gala to collect funds for her in 2025 so she can help other, other people. But we're gonna have a few minutes just to her what the foundation is all about. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath to you. So as she said, I'm Kimberly Walden, and I am the founder of GLM2 Foundation, and GLM2 stands for God Loves Me Too. And um, God basically wrecked my world a few years ago. I had a 20-year career in new construction, and he said, this is what we're going to do. And I said, no, we're not, and he won. That's basically how that works. But what we do is we provide long-term aftercare for women and their children who've been affected by human trafficking and domestic violence. We are currently working with 26 adults and 44 children here. Okay, and so the need is great. When I say long-term, we come alongside them for a minimum of two years, maximum of five, and help them rebuild their lives. We help them find housing, jobs, childcare, everything that you and I need, except they've never had that. They've had every, all of that stripped from them and had heinous crimes against humanity committed upon them. So I just want to thank you personally, because a member of this um, church community, and well, actually, no, this is someone else. This is oh, Heidi. Heidi. Yeah. And um, which, she's not here, but her daughter, I, I, I've never met you, but I knew exactly who you were when you walked up on this stage. That's all there is to it. Anyway, your mom helped uh, a couple of years ago with one of our annual uh, fundraisers called a Fun Run. And she helped us put some swag bags together. And she reached out to me uh, this past year and said, hey, what else can we do? I want to go to our church. Okay. And so if you walk out these doors and turn right, there's a table where you lovely people have not only helped some gift certificates and gift cards at Christmas, but also for um, toiletries that we provide for the women in programs. So that they're learning how to do budgeting by being able to shop for these toiletries, et cetera, so that they're growing and they're learning about Christ as well. So I just want to thank you personally for being the hands and feet of Jesus, because that's what it means. It's, it's not just let me, let me just, you know, give you a Bible or, or listen to a sermon, because that's all important as well. Don't get me wrong. But when you love on people in the name of the Lord, it has a greater impact than you have any idea. You have, whew, you have no idea how you have impacted the lives of these women and children. So thank you. I just thank you very much. So thank you, Kimberly. And um, in 2025, we'll be having our gala, and you will hear all about it. But it's coming up, and we just want you to be aware of what is this about. This, is, this fundraiser is not going to be about us. It's going to be about them, about why God sent us to this world and why we have a Christian school where everybody can come. So um, I'm just going to show you a really minute it's not that long. Video of this last week, we had a week of prayer. And uh, if you can play the video, that's just a little glimpse of what happened. We had a lot of kids sick this week, though. There's something going on. That's just a glimpse. And then we have a, I know we are having a work big this Sunday. 
the school went ahead and did his, its part. So these are just a few pictures of what we're done. There it is, it's clean. Students and teachers service day number one. That's where we used to have the desks and all that. That is the other side that we clean as well. And that's the kids working. That's their service day and that's the second day. So that all that section is clean so it will be a lot less work for the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be here tomorrow at nine o'clock. So um, that is, we organizing, kids working, putting the, uh, relocating and organizing the PE and food pantry. So that is it. And please help us be careful when you're driving through the cones. We have several broken and we don't have money to, to get new ones. So just be careful with that when you're driving around and have a blessed Sabbath day from the school. We are so excited to see the kingdom of God growing. Am I on? Okay. And we are so excited for Frank and his, his commitment for, to the Lord and to his truth. Yeah, come on up, Frank. I'm very excited for you. Thank you. Well, Frank, uh, you have uh, been coming to church for a while, and uh, in 2022, you also attended the Revelation Seminar that we had here yes, sir. In, in our church. Yes, sir. So, I've been, uh, I've been uh, coming here about three and a half years, almost four years. Three and a half, almost four years. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, we are happy for you being part of it, and now that uh, God gave you courage and strength to officially become a member mm -hmm. of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yeah. Uh, Frank ha has been baptized before, but would like to join by the profession of faith. Yes, and we have met together, went uh, through some studies together, as well as I mentioned uh, through the prophecy of, of hope that we had here at the church. And um, uh, I did go through all the vows together with Frank, just for your benefit. I will read the last three. So number 11 reads, I know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I purpose by the grace of God to fulfill His will by ordering my life in harmony with these principles. I do. I accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and have been so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and His forgiveness of my sins. I have. And last one, I accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship. I desire to be a member of this local congregation of the world church. I do. Amen. It's a motion to welcome Frank into the family. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, Frank. Thank you. We're happy that you're a part of this last day movement and that you can stand together with us and work together with us. We have a mission to do. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, as you know, we have this, this tree that is filled Mostly with ribbons of people, the, the names that are written on the ribbons of people that you are praying for that don't have the full commitment to Christ or, or to His truth. And also we have some fruits that are growing in it because you're an apple of God's eye. So we see the kingdom of God growing as well. And uh, Frank, is there somebody who helped you to make this decision yes, to sir. officially become... My beautiful fiance, Vicky. Beautiful fiance Vicky. <laughs> Amen. And we also want to give you this book. Welcome your church family album and the certificate. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations, Vicky. <laughs> Congratulations, Frank. Welcome.
it's time for intercessory prayer, we have much to thank God for, don't we? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, for all those who are able to kneel, let us kneel and go boldly before the throne of our Father. There's a healing in the house. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for being our Savior and Lord. And what we have witnessed here this moment ago. Thank you for your spirit still moves upon the hearts of men and women and children to submit their lives fully unto you. Father, we thank you for your presence within this place and within our house of our hearts. Father, we ask that your spirit not only be here, but be with the sick and shut in right now. And those who are mourning, I ask you to be with Ken Heaton right now and this church. Thank you for being the God of healing, the God of hope. Father, we ask that we remember the mission in which you have called us to do. May it be a heavy burden upon our hearts to deliver this gospel across the globe to all four corners of the earth. That all who are seeking for a savior may have you as their savior. Help us, Lord, in this work and to finish this work, that we may see you again in the clouds of glory. But unto then, keep us close. Keep us growing in your faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I witnessing today we have seen that there's power in the name of Jesus you know the scripture said there's no other name on the heaven whereby men may be saved and we know that name is Jesus Christ I pray that you're blessed this morning as I sing this song to you I speak Jesus
family, I speak his holy name, Jesus. Show Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, over. Amen. Thank you, Randy. What a wonderful power there is in the name of Jesus. And that's what we are here today. We are here to worship him. Let him fill our hearts. Let him be poured into all our beings and recommit together for, with him. So as we celebrate communion... Part of that communion is uh, washing off the feet as Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. And Jesus invites us to participate in that uh, as well so that we can be washed, so that we can be humbled before each other and before the throne of God, and that he can make us clean. So as he prepared the disciples' heart to receive this new covenant that he wanted to give, give to them so that our hearts will be prepared to receive that covenant as well. We read in John chapter 13, starting with verse 12. It reads, So when he had washed their feet, taking his garment and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then... Your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also are to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So we receive a blessing when we do it. And Jesus says, this is an example, so you will do as I have done to you. So today we have an opportunity to really receive this blessing that Jesus wants for us to have. As we come and participate in this ordinance of humility, the deacons have prepared places for us where we can do that. So on the, that uh, end... 
um, in the hallway behind the stage. If you go down the hallway, there is a space prepared where the women can meet together and participate in that. If you go to that end where the beginners meet, on the very end, there's a place where the couples can meet together and participate in that well in that way. And also down the hallway, but uh, to the right, if you, as you go down the hallway in the youth room, there is a place prepared uh, where the men can meet together and celebrate this ordinance uh, together with each other as well. Now let us remember that this is a sacred time where we are to prepare our hearts to receive the Lord, to renew our covenant with Him. So I invite you as you come back to, to restrain from just fellowshipping. We love to do it in the church, but there is a time for that. But spend time quietly in prayer as you come back from that service so our hearts is prepared to receive this renewal of commitment with Him. As you come back also, the deacons will reserve a rose so it will be easier to serve. So please do not sit in the rows that will be reserved as you come back and you will find a different place. And when we come back, we will um, study the word together and then participate in the ordinance of symbol of his blood and body that is broken for us. In Seventh-day Adventist Church, we practice open communion. That means that everybody who believes is welcome to participate and celebrate together with us. And we can separate at this time.
to know that we are receiving a blessing not just from fellowship from each other, but from God, from His presence here in this place, from this, His presence in our heart, from His cleansing of our hearts, of our lives, and the new hope that we have in Him. And now, as uh, we have a little shorter sermon because of a longer service, I invite you to bow your heads for prayer as we begin. Our dear Heavenly Father, it is such a joy to worship you, to celebrate together with our wonderful church family, and to come to this table, to this covenant that you have created for us. And we ask that you would continue to dwell in this place, that you would fill every part of our heart, that we will be able to surrender everything to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read first, uh, before we begin, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we will read verses 23 through 26. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. It reads, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. What a wonderful and powerful verses that we can look at, that we can, can gain from so much. Today we'll just look at the portion of those verses and see how we can apply those into our lives. As Jesus and disciples, they gather together to celebrate the Passover in the upper room, just like all the, the Hebrews have done for many years before. And every time that they would do that, they would reflect, reflect on the past, reflect on the present, and reflect on the future. They would think of that night back in Egypt where they had to hurry to pack. They would think of all the plagues that have fallen so they could be redeemed, so that they could be set free, and that they could be reclaimed to be with God. They would think of that angel that was sent, the angel of death, and the preparations that they had to make, make for it to slay the lamb, to put the blood on the post of the doors. And as the angel would walk through, the angel didn't look into the house to see whether there were Jews there or non-Jews. He didn't look into the house to see if they have done everything right or not. He didn't look into the house to see how their deeds, if their deeds were more of the good deeds than of the bad, and weigh those out. The only thing he looked at, if there was a blood on the posts of those doors. And if there were, he would pass over and they would gather and tell each other that story over and over again, how it was back then, how God protected them, how God redeemed them, so they would reflect on the past. They would apply it to the present, and they would look to the future because the blood of that lamb on the post, it pointed to the future to the Lamb of God, for them that would come in the future, and they would celebrate that together. As Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room, now he wanted to present them the new covenant. Because everything for centuries, for millenniums, that people were looking forward to was about to be fulfilled. The Lamb of God was sent into the world so that our sins, our lives could be covered by the blood of the Lamb. So now he institutes new covenant together with his disciples on that Passover night. 
But again, as we look through those verses in 1 Corinthians, we are again to encourage to look at the past, apply it to our present, and look to the future as well. It's wonderful to be able to do this from the perspective of the communion table. So in the verses we see that we're encouraged to look at the past, right? We proclaim his death as we come to the communion to celebrate. We remember his sacrifice. We remember his love. We remember how God loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. We remember that night of betrayal. We remember the crucifixion. Remember the agony on the cross that the righteous son became the curse for us so that we could be made righteous. We look back and remember the spilled blood that was spilled for us, and the broken body that was broken for us. And we remember it through the symbols of the blood in, represented in the grape juice, through the symbols of, of, of the bread that represents his body that is broken for us. And it helps us to reflect, to remember, to have those symbols. Bonhoeffer was a brilliant young pastor and seminary teacher, and he opposed uh, Adolf Hitler in 1930s. On April 5, 1943, a German arrested Bonhoeffer and put him to prison. Two years after they arrested him, they would hang him on the gallows, just days before Allies would sweep in to, um, to liberate Germany. About ten weeks after his arrest, Bonhoeffer ended a letter to his parents with these words. He wrote, It is Monday, and I was just sitting down to a dinner of turnips and potatoes when a parcel you sent to me by Ruth arrived. Such a thing give, gives me great joy than I can say. Although I utterly convinced that nothing can break the bond between us, I seem to need some outward token or sign to reassure me. In this way, material things become the vehicle of spiritual realities. I suppose it is rather like the, uh, the felt need in our religion for sacraments. So Bonhoeffer knew that his relationship with his parents is strong, that the separation and the prison is not going to break that. But he was encouraged just by having some physical parcel, some, some physical uh, thing sent to him as a reminder. So Jesus also instituted this covenant, this ordinance that we can celebrate together. Several times a year, as we come together, we look at those symbols, and it helps us to remember how much he loved us, that he spilled his blood, how much he loved us, that he broke that body. Ellen White writes, the ordinance of baptism and the Lord's Supper are two monumental pillars. So that's why we come and celebrate. We come and celebrate, and it reminds us of his amazing love for us. And every time we come in the com to the communion table, we should be reminded of that amazing love. As it's written also in Desire of Ages, page 659, we read, Our Lord says, Under conviction of sin, remember that I died for you. When oppressed and persecuted and afflicted for my sake and the gospels, remember my love, so great that for you I gave my life. When your duties appear stern and severe and your burdens too heavy to bear, remember for your sake I endured the cross, despising the shame. When your heart sinks from the trying ordeal, remember that your Redeemer lives to make intercession for you. So we come to remember. We come to remember the past, the cross, and it reminds us of his eternal and undying love for us. So as 
through the view of the table, we see the past. We see the cross. But we also see the present in a much better view from the table. In 1 Corinthians 11.28, it says, But let a man examine himself. So what are we doing in our lives? How are we living? Do we put Jesus first in our lives? Are we living that life that he wants us to live by the power that he gives to us? In the state employment office in Tuscan, Arizona, as you would come in, there would be great big mirrors that were, were hanging on the walls. And over the mirrors, some people placed some signs over the mirrors. One sign read, would you hire this person? <laughs> so as you look, you can have some self-reflection as you're trying to find the job. Another mirror read, are you ready for a job? So we are invited also in these verses, in this occasion, as we come to the table, to have some self-reflection to look at ourselves and see, Lord, is there something that you need to change in me? And as we read the Word, as we look at the cross, that reflection becomes more clear and clear, and we can see ourselves better and better. If you read the whole letter to the Corinthians, Paul is writing to them, and they're not behaving very much like Christians. They're not uh, making choices that the Christians would do. They're not building relationships the way, the way that Christians are to. And they're bickering between themselves, but the call is not to look at the other, but to examine themselves. As Jesus also encouraged us, right? First, you need to get the log out of your own eye, and then you'll be in better position to help your brother get the speck out of his eye. So here we are encouraged to reflect on ourselves. But we also do not look at ourselves in order to try to fix ourselves on our own power. That's not what the present reality that the communion calls us to do. We reflect on ourselves through the Word of God and through the cross to see truly how sinful we are. If we try to look around, we always find somebody that's worse than us. But at the cross, there is a true reflection. And that means a true need of somebody beyond us to save us, to cleanse us, to restore us. It reads, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Covenant. Passover is a covenant. Covenant, first part, could be read as cover, to cover, cover the bill, I will pay for you. Some covenants involve an individual making a commitment that affects others, such as the last will and testament. To make a covenant is to make a binding agreement. We see God continually making covenants with his people. We read about Adam and Eve as he came and made a covenant with them, a promise that he would put enmity between them and the serpent, between the serpent and the woman. If that was not for that covenant, we would be lost right then and there. We wouldn't know what is wrong and what is right. But he plays that covenant there for us. After the flood, a covenant of protection was made with Noah, and we see the rainbow. We read also about the covenant with Abraham, promising that he would become the father of chosen people, and we are part of that covenant because it is not by birth, not by the will of man, but by the will of God that we are born again and called the children of God. We see on the Mount Sinai, God renewed his covenant with Moses. They didn't hire a lawyer and try to knock on the heaven's door in order to ask God to make the covenant with them. We didn't have any rights. No way to do it. 
No way to twist his arms to get anything from him, for we are the ones that rejected him. But he is the one who threw the doors of heaven open and entered into the covenant with us. When he was making a covenant with Abraham, they had to split the animals in half long ways. put those carcasses one on one side, one on the other. And usually during that type of covenant, it is the least of the party that would be forced to walk between those carcasses, signifying that if covenant would not be fulfilled, then that party will be split just like those animals. But God is the one who walked between the carcasses. He said, I will cover your shortcomings. I will cover your sins. I will put my righteousness on you. And he makes the covenant with us. No, he doesn't overlook sin. It must be paid. For the wages of sin is death, we read in Romans 6.23. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, Genesis 8, 21. But God desires to have this covenant with each one of us. He looked for this covenant from the very beginning. We read in Jeremiah 31, starting with verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I will put my law into their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Oh, how he longs for that covenant that he started, he initiated, because he loves you. Because he loves you. And as we participate in this communion, this is how we enter into that covenant as well. We read in Desire of Ages 660, it reads, He declares, Whose eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. It is by receiving the life for us poured out on Calvary's cross that we can live the life of holiness. And the life we receive by receiving his word, by doing those things which he has commanded, thus we become one with him. He that eateth my flesh, he says, and drinketh my blood dwells in me and I in him. As the liveth, living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. John 6, 54, 56, and 57. In a special sense, it forms a connection between dependent human beings and God. What a privilege to enter into this covenant. In order to make this covenant binding, Christ came. He became the curse. He poured out his blood and his body was broken. How can you enter that covenant? Well, there's no papers to sign, no lawyers to put the stamp on, but he invites us to this table and says, take of the symbol of breath. That means I am living in you. Take of the symbol of blood. That means I am living in you. We are one now. And we can claim this promise of a new life in him. As Jude 24, uh, chapter 1, verse 24 says, Now to him who is able, keep you from stumbling and to present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. If we enter that covenant that we claim all his promises, do you really believe that he is able to keep you from stumbling? Or do we take sinning just like we take breathing? We think we just have to do it. But if we are in this covenant with him, 
then we trust His power to live through us, not by ourselves. So we remember in, in Him. We remember Him in a dynamic sense. We don't merely recall His teaching and appearing long time ago and far away. We remember Him among us amidst the dismembering forces of our world. We become the very members of His body. As if we take one chapter back in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 17, it reads, For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. So there is no separation between having a covenant with God and having a covenant with each other as well as His body. When we partake of that bread, we enter covenant with each other as well. We become His body to do His will on this earth, to fulfill His purpose and His mission on this earth. So we reflect on the past from the communion table. We look at the sacrifice that Jesus had done for us. We look at the love that was poured out for us. We look at the present, and through the communion table, through those symbols, we reflect on ourselves and we search our hearts. We come and enter into this new covenant so we can live by His power and can be cleansed by His power. And by entering into that covenant, we become one body joined together with every ligament and skin and muscles and everything else joined together and working in harmony. And then we also look to the future. As we eat this meal, we anticipate Jesus' soon return. We look in the future and we remember this covenant until he comes we keep looking forward to that and jesus keeps look keeps looking forward to that too remember also in matthew 26 verse 29 it reads but i say to you i will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until the day when i drink it and you with you in my father's kingdom Jesus can't wait for the day to come. Jesus can't wait so you will be able to see him face to face, to give you a hug, to sit down. And as you take this grape juice, Jesus is longing to taste the fruit of the grape juice again with you because that means that the covenant is going to fulfill even further as we go into his kingdom. So we celebrate with joy. As we come to this communion table, we celebrate together with great joy in what He has done. And we have peace from Him as we look towards the future. Last quote from Desire of Ages, page 659. But the communion service was not to be a season of sorrowing. This was not its purpose. As the Lord's disciples gathered about His table... They are not to remember the lament uh, and lament their shortcomings. They are not to dwell upon their past religious experiences, whether that experience has been elevating or depressing. They are not to recall the differences between them and their brethren. The preparatory service has embraced all this. The self-examination, conf the confession of sin... Uh, the reconciling of differences has all been done. So it's not that it didn't, doesn't have to happen. It does. But we do it prior to coming to the communion table. That's probably another sermon for another day. But now they come to meet with Christ. They're not to stand in the shadow of the cross, but, but in its saving light. They to open the soul to the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness with hearts cleansed by Christ's most precious blood in full consciousness of His presence, although unseen, they are to hear His words. Peace I leave to you. My peace 
I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. So as we look to the future, we are filled with this hope that Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary that he is doing in our behalf will be soon over. That we as a church will soon fulfill the mission by his power that he gives us to do. And soon the clouds will be rolled back again. And that we will be able to join him in celebrating in heavenly temple. And until then, he promises us that his peace will dwell with us. Amen. Amen. And again, reflecting on those verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It reads, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we are so humbled as we come to this table, to this covenant that we didn't initiate and couldn't initiate even if we wanted to, but you came to do it with us. And we want to thank you for your broken body that we could be made whole with you and with each other. We pray that you would bless those symbols. And as we partake of those symbols, that you would cleanse our hearts and that the covenant would be renewed in each heart that is present here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 and 26 reads, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we reflect on the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we are overwhelmed with gratitude for his redeeming blood. Offering us forgiveness and eternal life. May this reminder draw us closer to you and inspire us to live lives in accordance to your teachings. Until you soon return. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You'll find both symbols in the kit. I encourage you to wait until we all receive it and then we'll partake of it together. 
If uh, um, you would desire, we also have some gluten-free options. And after uh, these kids have been passed out, the deacons will also pass out some gluten-free option if uh, you need some as well. We also have some gluten-free uh, option here, and I'll ask deacons to pass uh, those out. If you would like to receive one, please raise your hand. who wanted to receive one but didn't get a chance to take one? There's somebody? Thank you. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
And Jesus also said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us stand for the closing hymn. We are so thankful that we can participate in this covenant together with you today. That we can renew it in our hearts, in our lives, in our church family here. And be united again with you and with each other. We are thankful that we can reflect back on the past and look at the cross. We are thankful that we can look at the present in the new life. We are thankful that we can look at the future and know that you are coming again soon. And may each heart be filled with your love, with your joy, and with your peace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. As you leave today, also one of the deacons will be standing there to collect uh, some offering for our benevolence fund. And I hope that you'll have a good Sabbath.